Welcome back. Welcome, Zarek. Bienvenido de nuevo. Bienvenido de volta. Contact de te revoir. Will come in Zurich. Now imagine if someone had not just written that all out for me, and I actually knew how to say welcome back in six languages, including some pretty obscure ones. Well, Philip Crowther, an international affiliate correspondent for the Associated Press, will join us live in just a moment, has gone viral this week for not just knowing six different languages, but for being able to report for multiple networks in six languages, including right here on News Nation. He put together a mash of a number of his hits from Kiev's uh, Freedom Square, posted it on Twitter, and it has gone seriously viral. Over 21 million views, and the video speaks for itself. There's been a war with Russian-backed forces in the east, uh, the Donbass region, for eight years now. But despite that, the capital city of Kiev is relatively calm. Lueur d'espoir que la diplomatie sie erwartet hatten. Desinformation, gefälschte Angriffe und ein Vorwand für Russland in die Ukraine einzumarschieren. The six languages you heard went in this order: English, Luxembourgish, Spanish, Portuguese, French, and German. The clip also garnered Mr. Grouthers some female admirers of the many responses. One person tweeting. Oh my God, is this man married? If he's not, where can I submit my application? And despite traveling all the way back to Washington, D.C. late last night, he made it in time to join us live. Philip Crowther, an international affiliate correspondent for the Associated Press, joins us. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So you speak six languages we know at least. Are there more that you weren't asked to use? In that spot, you know, in case of an emergency, say in Ukraine, when I most likely will be going back next week, I could maybe do something in Catalan for you, uh, spoken in Catalonia, in uh, in a part of Spain and uh, a small part of France. But that's pretty much it. I can just about make it to seven, maybe, <laughs> but I won't do more than that. Tell us about the clip. Did you know that people would lose their minds over this when you put it up? No, I'd never have done it um, <laughs> in that case. No, it's my own fault. I, I, put, I put it together myself. Uh, I've done it a few times before. Um, you know, when I go on assignment and I do broadcasts in all the six languages that I'm able to do, then I try to put a little clip together of one minute and, you know, put it out on social media and just see how it does. You know, it's always interesting to see uh, where these things travel and uh, who picks up on it. And this one was actually pretty slow uh, in how it developed. Uh, for the first um, half a day or so, it didn't get much traction. Why should it? Uh, but then, you know, one or two media personalities, maybe a film director here and there, a few other uh, of my peers uh, retweeted it and then I lost complete control over it. And uh, it's been a pretty relentless few days, at least when you look at my phone, uh, it's been vibrating rather a lot, uh, uh, a lot of notifications. But, you know, I'm not complaining. Uh, first of all, I put that video up myself. And secondly, you know, a lot of people go viral for the wrong reasons, uh, for doing something silly or stupid. And in this case, you know, uh, the comments are all positive. So um, really, I'm quite, quite grateful. Do you get more nervous reporting in some languages than others? I'm more nervous doing this uh, than doing what I did over there. <laughs> Come on. Um, no, I, let's put it, put it, put it this way. Um, there are some languages where my vocabulary is a little bit more limited. So if I um, don't remember a crucial word in Portuguese or German, uh, I'll have a little bit of trouble finding a synonym somewhere and finding my way out of that dark place that I get into when I forget a word. Um, the English language is easier that way. It has a much bigger vocabulary. It's my father tongue, so it's a little bit easier. But yeah, there's, there's a bit of nervousness uh, when, when I go on air in some of those languages. Uh, you know, it's every correspondent's fear, isn't it, to, uh, to end up with, without the words you need uh, to talk about what you've just seen. Uh, and I just hope every time it doesn't happen to me. Do you ever make mistakes and say something in one language when you meant to say it in another? I'd never admit that to you. Uh, no, I, there's, a, there's a few mistakes here and there. It's what we call false friends. Uh, so, for example, 
I might inv invent a word in Spanish that does exist in French, give it a bit of a Spanish ending, and think to myself, oh, that must be a word in Spanish, but then it isn't, and uh, native speakers will find out <laughs> if you're making that mistake, and they'll go, no, this guy isn't native after all. Uh, so uh, it, it occasionally happens. It's never happened that all of a sudden I break into the wrong language. Luckily, luckily that hasn't happened so far. How did you learn all these languages? Well, you know, the way I see it is I got most of them for free uh, because uh, I grew up in Luxembourg, small country in, uh, in Central Europe, uh, and uh, it's surrounded by larger countries, France, Belgium, uh, and uh, Germany. Uh, more importantly, though, my father is English, my mother is German. They spoke to my sister and myself in their respective mother tongues, so we were exposed to both British and uh, um, English and German, rather, uh, from an early age growing up in Luxembourg. That's the other obscure language you heard there. That I learned from my, my friends growing up in my village in, in Luxembourg. And French you learn really early in school because Luxembourg is a Francophone country. Now after that, uh, most of us who grow up in that country, we have our brains wired in a certain way. I think that we're able to learn more languages and I developed a passion for, for Spanish, studied it in, uh, in high school and then in university as well. And once that was fluent, I decided to you know, add Portuguese. So that's how I reached the, uh, the six. Is it odd being a polyglot celebrity? Yeah, it's weird. I didn't know I was. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the other day I was uh, speaking to someone about this and he was asking me, um, how many views has your, has your video actually got? And I said, well, I think we're over 2 million at this point. And he corrected me and said, no, it's over 20 million. I was a bit shell-shocked, to be honest. Um, but, you know, it's, um, I'm grateful for it. It's, it's, it's a nice thing to experience. It's, it's going viral, I think, for the right reasons. Uh, there are a lot of people commenting on the fact that they'd like to maybe learn another language, seeing what they saw in that video. There's a lot of really nice respect from, from colleagues in our, in our industry. It's very nice to see, and uh, there aren't too many snarky comments, so it makes a really nice change. Which almost never happens on Twitter. So that really tells you that, isn't it? <laughs> that really tells you that you're doing uh, something right. All right. Uh, Philip Crowther, uh, merci and au revoir. Uh, my French from high school. That's about all I got. Um, and uh, I salute you. It's amazing. Thank you for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I understood what you said. Well done. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.